Isn't this great? Here we are. We're all together in person after this long period of not being able to meet at a, at a conference like this. It is so great to see everyone. It's a wonderful opportunity to see old colleagues, meet new colleagues and connect. We have over 400 people here in person from 55 countries and we have over 180 people registered online. Thanks to the Australian government, the conference committee and to the organizers, we're going to make the most of the opportunities for connection and learning that this conference offers. We're going to discuss some very serious issues. The conference is unique in connecting the WASH people and the water resources people. Uh, and climate change as an issue runs through this whole conference, as, you, as you've heard. We know that climate change manifests itself through water, and the next few days will help us understand that and help us articulate it. As you all know, the theme of this year's conference is achieving SDG 6 in a changing climate. This encompasses two of humanity's greatest challenges. As the climate crisis worsens, we know that water will be the most valuable resource we have. It will also be the most vulnerable resource we have. This is because the climate crisis is a water crisis. Climate change impacts all areas of development, especially water and wash. Climate change requires us to fundamentally adapt our ways of doing things, including our water and wash system. While climate change represents a great challenge to our development efforts, it also represents an opportunity. Adapting our systems to climate impacts means adapting our systems to be more sustainable, inclusive and effective. It means adapting to a water and wash future in a climate challenged future, but a future which we can build together. And a future that fora like this conference and the conversations I know you will have this week will be part of the solution. Climate is now everything what we do. Yep. In Asia Pacific, we say climate battle is won or lost in our region. And I want to make an appeal to everybody in this room that the world of WASH cannot wait. We know that many and perhaps most water and sanitation service providers are having to adjust their operations to account for climate change. Uh, they're relying on new sources of data that pr can predict the changes that climate change will bring. But the data from these sources are often unfamiliar, confusing, uh, and not necessarily well suited to provide the information that utility managers need to make decisions. So we want to look at how we can bridge this gap, how we can increase understanding between utility managers and climate scientists. In regard to the science that, that we relied heavily, our team used uh, resistivity and also uh, geophysics, uh, science and technologies to find water but the traditional knowledge that uh, the community shared with the team basically it was Im really important in directing or inform where to find that water. It's important to remember that humans are everywhere on this planet and we've been actively changing ecosystems for a really long time and natural doesn't always cater for human needs so what we're really wanting is um, particularly in a wash context is is good water quality and and drinking water at a minimal cost um, so that that minimal cost thing I think is important um, and this is where ecosystem and catchment health comes into it if you've got a healthy functioning ecosystem then you've got good water quality to start working with and it lowers your cost of, um, of treatment so we're here to try and predict uh, what the future looks like and therefore what infrastructure we need and when um, it's a supply and demand equation that's very, very critical to the business. We're still a long way from really being able to predict um, climate change outcomes in a, a form and a, with a resolution that would be particularly useful to Toby. So we're in the space of having to make best bets, having to manage really adaptively, um, having to involve many um, different voices in understanding the systems but also many different voices I think in identifying what are the, the values that we critically must be protecting. The point I want to make here is not to see regulation as a barrier or a constraint. 
Regulators just reflect community expectations, but they lag. So get ahead of the game and look at what's coming and start to change your organisations and how you do things so that you are ready for the future. But the other point I want to make about capacity building is, is around leadership. Or, or, and leadership isn't just about for people with titles of authority. Um, we, we have a philosophy at Bar and Water that everyone is a leader. Everyone has the ability to identify a problem, take action for that problem and deliver a result. Organisations in the water and wash sector are full of people who understand technical information. That is not the barrier. The barrier is that ability to think, how do I get from where I am to where I want to be? Scarcity is growing. The effects of climate change are devastating. Population growth or urbanisation. The government of Peru and the regulator recognise that something needs to be done to protect the sources of water. And this has nothing to do with the original mandate of the regulator, which is to regulate the provision of water and wastewater services. But they created, and the customers of the utilities are willing to pay additional, an additional concept called payment and explicit payment for protection of the watersheds that goes directly to the communities that manage those watersheds. And they decide what types of activities they want to do in their watersheds to improve the management of the water resources in the water set. What, what I, I learned during my time as a ch the chief regulator is that the most expensive water is no water. In this conference I learned um, from different sessions on climate resilient assessment and monitoring tools on how we can assess how resilient our approach is, how resilient our technological options um, are. So I really wanted to um, apply mm -hmm. those tools and reflect um, and maybe improve and maybe adjust, contextualize to our context in Indonesia. It's uh, comforting to me is finding the space an opportunity to, to network and with like-minded individuals around the same subject that uh, we are passionate about. I think similar to the sentiments shared that it's, it's scary to think about that SGD um, targets, it's just a few years um, uh, left to actually meet it. Uh, but we definitely know that talking to colleagues that we are all uh, geared around accelerating the efforts around this. Uh, firstly, I guess as a um, woman and then also a woman of colour, I found that the diversity um, of attendees here has been um, really nice. So it has been so wonderful um, to see so many people here and I think um, it really calls to the um, organising committee and I really want to thank them as well um, for I guess the culture that has been um, inspired by this conference. The world has a few big burning platforms and unfortunately even though we know water should be one of them, it's not one of them at the political level. The political burning platforms are food security, energy security and climate change. These are the issues that are drawing priority and at political attention and it is crucially important that we shout out all the time that water is a part of the solution to these problems and including the climate problem. Climate change and wash are something that we cannot uh, separate 
think separately anymore because uh, they are related to each other and like for example the wash sector also contributes to uh, greenhouse gases as well and the other way around where climate change will cause so many impacts on the wash sector. Um, and something that I really enjoyed about the conference was just connecting with, with people again. Um, I've been working with so many colleagues over the past year online and it's just been so lovely meeting everyone in person for the first time. The atmosphere, it's really buzzing, um, it's got a lot of energy and there's also a sense of urgency amongst everyone to, to really progress towards SDG 6 and um, find out ways we can collaborate better and get things done. Uh, it was uh, truly inspiring. I'm surrounded like so many innovative approaches to find the solutions on WASH. And also I'm grateful to be here uh, and to meet uh, um, professionals around the world and experts and experts. Actually, the, all the sessions was very important and uh, very useful for me. It's quite hard for me to choose the sessions. Uh, yes, I have attended yesterday uh, climate resilience tools and uh, tools and practical tools have to approach to find the climate uh, resiliencies in wash and water inclusions. And also I have attended uh, um, this morning, it was a truly inspiring um, session. It was a circular economy uh, and uh, innovative financing approach plenary. Yeah, by the World Bank. It was uh, inspiring and how far we can achieve in wash sector and water sector uh, introducing the circle economy 